Rotational kettlebell exercises, are they safe? Is this something that you can do and incorporate in your workout? Or should you avoid it? Or are you missing out if you don't include them at all? Let's try to answer these questions. Grüezi Trant, Gregory von Lebestag here. Now, first of all, I'm not an expert on the spine. I'm working hard on getting Dr. Stuart McGill on our podcast because I have so many questions when it comes to the kettlebell and spine mechanics that only he can answer. However, what I've done is I have bought this book, Low Back Disorders. When we work with kettlebells, there are shear forces involved and different loading mechanisms that act on the spine and on the muscles as well, but especially on the spine when, when we take a look at the snatch, the swing, clean jerk, etc. Now, I've also talked to Luca Kurcher and Katz Kettlebell Dojo about it, and I will give you their opinions on this topic, and I think we kind of agree along the same lines. Another thing that you see, it was requested in the YouTube comments, not only this question popped up in the comments, but also Bill Esch, for example, the kettlebell warrior. The dude is solid, the dude is crazy what it does with the kettlebell, and his form and technique is on point. Yet he does a lot of rotational exercises. So the question is, because Bill is doing these exercises, should we do them as well? Or is Bill equipped differently? Maybe his spine is genetically built to withstand these forces. Let's take a look at Dennis Vasilev, an 11-time world champion, doing hundreds of reps with 232s. And we also see YouTubers, for example, Vahava Fitness, who is doing some crazy rotational kettlebell exercises, which sometimes I highly doubt that he incorporates them in his, in his daily workouts. He may, but I doubt it. Now, at the same time, I would have mentioned that I'm the basics guy. I believe in the basic exercises, the clean, the jerk, the swing, the deadlift, the press, the squat, etc. And of course, we could start this whole conversation with the idea that, well, the kettlebell only works in the sagittal plane. But Luca Kurcha said something fascinating. You may not be working uh, all the planes as you're in your main lifts, but you believe me, you're working all the muscles in your body. Now, I do believe that you can rotate your spine with the kettlebell or twist it. I believe it has to be controlled. This is just my personal opinion. And it's not quite good in form because I'm not an expert on the spine. Now, I want to read you something from this book from Dr. Stuart McGill. He says, are twisting and twisting lifts particularly dangerous? He says the act of twisting is not a problem, but generating twisting torque is or might pose a problem. Being twisted reduces the ability of the spine to bear load and thus twisting when combined with twisting torque becomes problematic. Generating high torque while the spine is twisted, appears to create a problematic combination and a high risk. This is of particular concern in several sports and is addressed in that context in chapter 11. And now Luca confronts this idea and says something worth noting. He says, there are poisonous exercises. And he mentions, for example, the hockey deadlift. Let's take a look at combat athletes, MMA fighters, for example. Their spine will be put in delicate positions because of the sport. We maybe need some SPP2 exercises, some specific physical preparation exercises to build more stability in the spine when the athlete is put in that position. Now these exercises are poisonous to a certain degree because they put the spine in this delicate position. However, we need strength in that position, so maybe we need to apply it. And most of the time, I would say that people who do not engage in combat sports probably don't need these exercises. For example, the hockey deadlift or the Russian twist. Now, I've also talked to Kat's Kettlebell Dojo about this, and she said, Ooh, this is such a hairy issue. Um, so first, um, since I vouch for simplicity in kettlebell training, 99.99% .99 of people are never going to get to having to rotate when training with kettlebell. Now, the reason why I want to talk about it is because it's so rampant sometimes on social. You see jugglers engage in it. You see YouTubers engage in it. And there's one thing that I want you to note, and that is there is a saying that goes anything for the gram. So we have to factor in the thought 
that maybe there are some creators out there or some kettlebell athletes or some jugglers or whatever folks out there who build their following on these crazy looking exercises. So they create a demand for these crazy looking exercises because their audience want this. Along comes somebody who just bought a kettlebell and they like what to do and they engage in these crazy exercises and they hurt themselves. Now I wanna quote Dr. McGill again from his book. And I wanna show you this image of the fireman that swings the ax in picture A that has an ax to it and picture B with a check mark to it. Now it says twisting the torso is occurring at the same time the twisting torque is required which is a dangerous combination when we take a look at A. When we take a look at B generating the twisting torque but restricting the torso twist is a spine sparing strategy. Let's take a look at the windmill. Let's take a look at the Turkish getup. What's happening there? Well in that case I believe if we keep the lower part of our spine safe the lumbar spine and we rotate the T-spine while keeping the lower spine locked, then we're safe. That's what a proper windmill engages in. And that's the technique that you have to engage in when you do a proper Turkish getup. So my conclusion would be, if we engage in rotational exercises, we have to ask ourselves a few questions based on the level of knowledge that I'm having right now. First question is, am I genetically built to withstand these loads. Some spines may crush engaging in, pow in certain powerlifting moves or in certain weightlifting exercises because they're not built for it. Or maybe you can build your spine up to that level, who knows? But I believe there's a huge genetic, genetic component which Dr. McGill, as far as I know it, confirms. B, do I really need it? And this is where most people probably say no or where most coaches will probably tell you no, unless you have to engage in some poisonous exercises or in some SPP2 activities because you need it for your sport. And the last question that we can ask ourselves is, am I able to secure my lumbar spine while rotating the T-spine when I'm engaging in these rotational exercises? My answer would be probably most of us will have some trouble especially if we get into fatigue or we engaging in, in engaging a lot of reps or use heavier weights then maybe we lose that sense of awareness to really keep the lumbar spine safe so it's not easy to answer this question but my advice the takeaway point that i would want to share with you is most of us don't have to engage in those exercises because most of us don't engage in MMA sports activities. And even if we do, there's a even a smaller percentage of us who really gets paid to do it. And number two, you're not Bill Esch. I'm not Bill Esch. I'm not Dennis Vazilev. These are specimens. These are folks. These are guys who are really good at what they do. And they have a heightened sense of awareness for their bodies and they are maybe genetically built to do these exercises. And the last point is always factor in folks who put content on YouTube and on social who just do it for clicks and views. Because what I live by now is the motto, a clean and jerk will not impress anyone on social media, but it will leave a huge impression on your body. So if you really want to engage in the frontal plane, where your arms are laterally extended away from your center of mass, then maybe a better option would be to engage in maces or in club bells. So you see the kettlebell offers you many things. And in many cases, the answer is not 100% absolute, but I think now we can draw a clearer picture whether or not rotational exercises are necessary and if they serve you any benefits. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it, consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content. And if you're looking for a kettlebell program that builds you up from a beginner to a slowly advanced trainee in the course of about three months, and you maybe want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching, because maybe you want to lose weight or you want to get in shape, then check out 90 days of kettlebells. You'll find the link in the description, 14 day free trial included.